Hello, everybody. Welcome to Deer Lakes, where today the Highlands Golden Rams will take on the Deer Lakes Lancers in a non-section game. But it's an important game as far as seeding goes. Deer Lakes, although a 3A team, they're the number one team in 3A, and they will be hosting the Golden Rams tonight. Two important things about tonight's game. Number one, even though it's non-section, it's going to help us build a resume as we go into the uh, conference. And again, seeding is very important. Two teams get a home game. We want to be one of those two teams. So by beating Deer Lakes here today, it'd be a big test to pass. And the other thing is number two, this team really hasn't had a big test pass this year. Lost to Hampton twice, lost to Knock once, and again, we need to put a good team effort together. We've got all 1,000 point scores done. Now we can really concentrate on getting down and playing basketball. Joining me tonight is 2009 graduate, part of the championship team who went to the WPIL, Ken Choma. Ken, what do you think about Deer Lake? Well, I know they are the defending Whippeal champions, and they are currently number one in the 3A, so uh, definitely a big test tonight. Last night, they're coming off a win against Apollo Ridge, 78-23, to so I'm assuming the starters are going to be well-rested. Yeah, Mike, uh, Kenny, it was a big game as far as uh, Deer Lakes goes. They're undefeated in their section, and Coach L.B. Fletcher, they went all the way to the state finals last year. They lost to a team called West Catholic, but again, they returned one starter and a guy named... Uh, Billy Schaefer, tremendous athlete, but they've got a lot of talent on that bench last year, and they're playing this year. Senior Wayne Love, six foot four. He's going to play football at college level. And we have a coach's son, Aiden Fletcher. And again, they've really tried to build a program here. And it's basically, they started last year. They want to continue it here tonight. So it's a big game for both teams. And again, looking forward to tonight's challenge. Let's see what the Golden Rams can do. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. All right, let's take a look at the starting line. So the visiting Highlands Golden Rams dressed in their traveling brown and gold. They will start number zero, Cameron Regard, 18 points a game. Freshly minted 1,000 point score as of last night. Number two, Ali Sharif, point guard averages five points a game, six foot junior. Number four is Tommy Counter, 6'2", senior, 90% foul shooter. Always working on his golf swing, Ken, did you see that? Number 15 is Braden Foster, 6'8", senior, averages 21 points a game. And number 23, Jordan Devere, 6'1", senior, averages 14 points per game for the Golden Rams. And now for the homestanding Deer Lake Slancers. And again, the number one team in 3A, they will start number three, Colin Rogers, a 5'10", sophomore. Number 12, coach's son, Aiden Fletcher, six foot senior. Number 20, the returning starter from last year's 3A championship team, Billy Schaefer, six one senior. And number 22, six three junior, Nathan Moore. And the big guy they go to down low is number 24, Wayne Brown, six three senior captain. Always a tough place to play in. Ken, do you remember, were they in your section when you played back in 2009? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I can't quite remember that far back these days. We played here a few times back in the day, and like I said, always a tough place. Earlier in the year, Burrow played a section game here, Ken, and all five starters for Burrow fought out, including their six man. My kind of players. <laughs> so let's take a look at the referees, by the way, for tonight's game. Jack Zal, Greg Kretz, Doug Traveris, and hopefully they won't have to toot their whistle that much. We're going to start with a technical foul. That's what the coach was upset about before pregame. Tell us what you saw, Ken. Uh, I just saw the coach pretty upset speaking with the referees. I'm assuming somebody may have accidentally dunked in the pregame. Cam Regar will get a chance to add to that 1,000 points immediately. Makes the first. We haven't had that in at least 10, 15 years, starting the game with a technical foul. Cam makes them both, and it's 2 nothing Highlands. The only thing I can think of is maybe somebody got caught uh, dunking the ball in the pregame. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. It looked like they were motioning towards the rim uh, during the argument that I saw. Well, that's the manager's job to make sure the referees aren't out there when they're dunking. Highlands goes to work on offense, and they get possession of the ball off the technical foul. Looks like a 2-3 to start for Deer Lakes. They're extending it. 
They get on to Foster. Over to Callender. Down to Foster. Teardrop in for two. And Highland starts off with a 4 0 lead before Deer Lake starts the ball. Touch the ball. That's impossible. But yeah, they not. did it. <laughs> Highland's playing man to man. They'll switch on everything. Wayne Love with the ball out high. Gets it over to Rogers. Three pointer taken by Schaefer. He misses. Rod Love gets the rebound back to Rogers. His three. Misses. Battle for the rebound. Hustle by Love saves it. Back out to Rogers. Deer Lakes is a scrappy team, and they will hustle. And so far, they beat Hines with all the loose balls. Down they go to Love. Let's see what he does against Foster. Challenges, misses. Rebound up and in by number 22, Nathan Moore. No, he missed it. Oh, he missed it. It came out. I thought it went down. Hines <laughs> still leads 4 0. I thought that ball went in. Now it looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Stolen by Rogers. He misses. So far, Deer Lake's missed three easy laps. There's a lid on it for him. Cam Regard takes a three, misses. Battle for the rebound. They're going to get Cherie for the foul there. We talk about this being a big game for Highlands. Also, they'd like to keep their number one rating in uh, 3A. They look a little nervous. Yeah, like I said, both teams played last night uh, with a lopsided victory for Deer Lakes. I'm assuming the starter sat a good bit. Might uh, take a quarter or so to get their legs under him here. Hines won 70 to 50 last night over Greensburg in the section game. Both teams played section games last night. Schaefer has it, looks down. And they're going to call an offensive foul on number 22, Nathan Moore. His first, team first. And the Deer Lakes fans don't seem to appreciate that. Nice crowd here today for a Saturday early evening game. It's really noisy in here too, Ken, a lot of echo. Looks like it's a 2-3. Going to be shots on the perimeter right there to get to the middle, Mike. Nice, soft, and up and nice in. Touch. Jordan Tavares, very strong on the inside, and that's where you attack the 2-3, down the middle. There you go, two in for Nathan Moore that time. Deer Lake's on the board, trailing 6-2. They're going to put some pressure on the Golden Rams. I've always said this, Ken, good teams like to be pressed. And Foster just dominated inside there. So pressure didn't hurt the Golden Rams, but they're quick down. Foster changed that shot. Who they're going to call the foul on? They're going to get Tommy Callender on the reach in. I didn't think it was Brayton. He had a good position that time. Quickly in to Schaefer. Easy does it. Didn't seem like anybody was set for that play. The referee quickly inbounded it. Makes it eight to five, Highland. Here comes the pressure. And they're gonna get that two on one on the baseline every time if they break the pressure, which they've been doing. Sharif has a three up and down. Ali Schaefer averages six a game. Makes it 11 to five, Highlands. Love misses a jump shot, gets his own rebound though. Well, it's important Highlands got off to a quick start here, Ken. They've trudged a lot of the games, those big games I talked about earlier, they didn't win, and they had a fight back so far. They're in control 11 to five. Yes. Schaefer, guarded by Callender, gets it over to Fletcher. Coach's son, out of control, missed it. They're gonna call a block. Who are they gonna get it on? Was it Regard or Foster? They're gonna call down Cam Regard, his first. Three quick fouls for Highlands. And that's going to put Nathan Moore, the 6'3 junior, on the line. Yeah, Deer Lake's very aggressive on the offensive board so far. Going to need some help down there. Yeah, they don't seem to be intimidated by the 6'8 Foster at all. They're going right at him, in fact. Moore misses the first. Yeah. 
Makes the second, Moore now has three. Cuts the lead to 11 to six, 4-11 to go here in the first quarter. And again, here comes the pressure. Oh, easy still that time. Third Highlands turnover, and Moore goes in and scores. He's got five. They've got to be patient against this pressure. All they got to do is get the ball in the middle. Right there, turn, two on one. Every time, Ken. In and out for Regard. Fletcher with it, gets it over to Love. Love over to Rogers. Rogers calling out a play here. One four low set. Here comes Fletcher, Ryan, and he's gonna get fouled by Foster. Four quick fouls here, and we talked about a lot of fouls occurring here on this floor. Happened to Burrow right now. Highlands already has four fouls. Good news, only one apiece on four of the starters. Coach's son goes to the line, Aiden Fletcher. Seems like every coach's son knows how to make foul shots. Can I wonder why? Could it be being a gym rat? Most likely the problem. <laughs> Lots of time hanging around the gym. Fletcher makes them both, and all of a sudden, Highlands only has a one-point lead. We said they had to get out early. Deer Lake's making a little comeback here. This time they back off the pressure a little bit. Highlands is going to try to recognize the defense here. And they're going to get a foul that time on Aiden Fletcher, his first. What do you think, Ken? Eh, Ticky-tacky. It's been that way so far. I thought he came from behind, though, and that's usually, I call that a position foul, and they will call that one. JT McHugh in for the Lancers. Number two. So far, seven fouls called in the first five minutes. Troy Belak checks in for Hines, and he throws it to nobody. Hines, very sloppy early on with four turnovers. Deer Lakes yet to commit one. Hines averages nine turnovers a game, they force 11. I think this matchup defense to give him some trouble with his own. Schaefer, three pointer wide open, misses. Battle for the rebound. And very aggressive down there. Nathan Moore picks up his seventh point. And Deer Lakes takes their first lead, 12 to 11. It's a 2 1 2 extended now. Rigar almost left his feet there. The zone seems to be giving a little trouble. And they're really shading towards Foster. They don't want to give him the ball. Cross court, skip pass. Out to Tavares, Tavares into the middle. Drops it off. Up and in, Foster on the offensive rebound. He's got six, Hines back in front, 13 to 12. Up and down we go. Moore has been very tough. And Foster gonna get his second. I'll be honest with you, Ken, most teams up in 4-8 Section one, they don't challenge Foster, but today Fletcher's taking it right to him. I mean, Moore, excuse me, taking it right to him. Well, I think the way they're playing the boards, you're gonna get a lot of fouls down low today off of offensive rebounds if they don't start to get some help down low. So attacking Foster's probably a good idea at this point to see if they can get him into foul trouble. First one's in, ties it at 13. Tommy Counter gets a break. Ali Sharif back in. Moore now with eight points. Misses a second, over to talk, no call though. Highland still trying to solve this zone. Sharif, jump ball they're gonna call. Alter in possessions, Deer Lakes will get it. If you remember, Highlands got the first possession after the technical fouls were shot by Cam Regard. And we're tied at 13. Rogers, the point guard, facing Regard. He'll take a three, rims out, 
Battle for the rebound, right to Wayne Love. Easy putback for Wayne Love. And they're very aggressive on the offensive glass. They take the lead, 15-3, first lead for Deer Lakes. They had Foster on the blocks that time, Ken. They were late getting there. We gotta get in the ball right there. The Euro step. And Belak from the corner nails his first three. Hydens goes back on top, 16-15. One minute to go here in the first quarter. Long three up and in for number two, JT McHugh off the bench. Got he kind of got bumped on that one too. Puts Deer Lakes in front, 18-16. And Deer Lake's now at more or less token pressure. Dick Hines can try to hold for one here, Ken? Yeah, with no shot clock in high school, uh, probably what you're going to see here. And again, by holding for one, they have the ball coming out of possession, too. So let's see what happens here. Skip over to Belak. He'll take another three. That one's off. Battle for the rebound. Let's see who comes down with it. Deer Lakes out hustling. They got a man back. Schaefer wide open. He carry picks, and we got a whistle after. What are they going to call here? He said he wasn't fully out of bounds when he tried to inbound the ball. So a turnover on Hyden is their fifth. And it's getting ugly quickly here. Deer Lakes on a run, leading 20 to 16 with 3.7. They left a wide open. At the buzzer, Schaefer misses, and at the end of one, Deer Lakes leads 20 to 16. Titans again in section 1-4A last night. They beat Greensburg-Salem 70 to 50. It was pretty much chalk in our section last night. Hampton beat Freeport 66-42, so they remain in first place undefeated. Knock beat Indiana 51-41. That sets up a big week for Nock next week. They host Hampton. They could actually get in a tie for first place with Hampton if they could win that game. If they lose, they come and visit Highlands for the last game of the season. And Highlands can then get second place alone. But again, they have to take care of business. We're at Indiana on Tuesday. Ken, you've made those trips to Indiana. Does that take it out of you a little bit sometimes? Eh, not really. It's all kind of mental. The bus ride, you got your friends on there, you know, got to unwind a little bit on the way there after uh, you know a long day at school. Uh, it tends to be more fun than um, psychological, I guess. Tuesday night, though. It's hard to get up there on a Tuesday night. Good news for everybody. Indiana next year is going to go up to 5A, so we won't have that trip coming up. We were talking about it a little bit yesterday. We think the basketball section next year is going to be very local. It's going to be Highlands, Valley, Deer Lakes. Deer Lakes is coming uh, up to 4A. Burrell is going to come up to 4A. Freeport's already in 4A at Knock, and Knock is going to be loaded. They start four sophomores, Ken, one of which, a kid named Pasek, seven foot tall. So it's going to be a tall order of business the next two years for all these teams. So right. we're going to be coming to Deer Lakes for the next two years. Thoughts on the first quarter so far? Uh, this is a lot harder than doing football games with you, I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fast paced, and. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Highlands seem to be doing really well early in the transition game, but once they slow down in the half court, they seem to have some trouble getting through that zone. But I think they, yeah, the yeah, if they look low trouble. quick, they might yeah. be able to get something, but uh, they haven't been able to. I would say if you don't like a defensive team is playing, beat them up the floor. Now they sink into a 2-3. There you go. Get it into Foster. Out of down 20-16. There's Sharif. Up and in, he hits his second three-pointer. Cuts the lead to 20 to 19. Deer Lakes have been the aggressor so far, would you say? Uh, yeah, definitely driving the lane a lot, drawing a lot of those fouls we've seen early. And uh, I said, might have to switch to a man here and maybe try to get some help. Uh, the zone doesn't seem to be rotating very well defensively. They're going to call a foul on Belak, I think it's going to be. Foster has two fouls. He has to be careful. That's for, yeah, they got Belak going over the back. Back in the lineup for Deer Lakes is number 12, Aiden Fletcher. It's first, team first. Love comes out safety position. Gets it back to the point guard, 
Rogers, he turns to the bench and says, what do you want, coach? One, four, low set. Fletcher comes around, looks down to Love. Love goes right up and in. Foster had to be careful with those two fouls. Wayne Love, 6'3", senior, has four. Deer Lake's now ahead by three, 22-19. We got to get some in the middle, kind of this two-one-two, or just do that, <laughs> or do that. Jordan Tavares drains the three, ties it at 22. Quickly ahead, Schaefer controls it over to Love. Love back to Fletcher. Fletcher three is good. How are they number one in three? Ken haven't had a turnover yet. That always helps. Those are just better possessions, more possessions. Highland has turned it over five times, so they've had the ball five more times than Highland. Tavares going to try again, hits again. That's how you break up a zone, Mike. Tavares with eight. I keep saying, Mike, it's Ken. Oh, you're old. It's okay. <laughs> off the front of oh, the rim. That's just bad luck. They're going to say it's going to be off of Foster. Again, six turnover. I was going to try to run that time, Mike, but they couldn't get out of their own way. We're tied at 25, 602 in the second. Rogers gets a screen from Moore. Over to Fletcher, down to Moore. Moore, the first one to double figures with 10. And Deer Lakes has a two point lead. We thought the game would be tight, and so far it has been. Nobody's got out to more than a five-point lead. Regard from the corner, and they're going to call a foul. Who are they going to get along with? Foster. Are they going to call it on Foster? Boy, oh boy, that's a tough call. Braden Foster with his third. Bahasa fouls. Happened to Burrow, they fouled out six guys, and now Braden Foster probably going to be on the bench for most of the second quarter, if not all of it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing him until the third. Blocked by Belak, great block, he even got it. Times will have to go to work without Foster in the middle. Three seniors on the floor now. Calendar, Regard, Tavares, junior Ali Sharif, and sophomore Troy Belak. Now they go to the middle. They're going to call an offensive foul. That one was legit. Tavares likes that little arm bar. He got caught doing it, and he's got to calm down, Mike, or he's going to get a technical. Five minutes to go here, second quarter. Deer Lakes leading 27-25. Uh, and he's going to get fouled. That time is Tommy Callender. And Nathan Moore will go to the line again. He is two of four so far from the line. I think they got regard with that one. Oh, I'm sorry. It does camp. Yep, his second. Moore makes the first. He now has 11, leads all scores. When we talk about a test, it's going to be a real test with Foster being on the bench. He averages normally about 30 minutes a game out of 32. First time we've had him down all year with foul trouble. Got to look low. There, there you, go. you go. That's how you beat the press. Belak to the rack, he's got five. Cuts it back to two, but here comes Deer Lakes right down the floor. And we got an offensive foul that time. Aiden Fletcher got a little out of control. Tavares took the charge. That's his second. That's their first turnover of the game. Has a chance now to tie. And Deer Lakes gonna really turn it up on defense now with this press since Foster is on the bench. Good teams like to be pressed. Let's see if we can break the press. Regard does. They're going to call travel. 
seventh Highlands turnover. Deer Lake's only committed one, and it's only a two-point game. Rogers over to Love. Love down to easy access to Nathan Moore. He's got 14. And again, he's only a junior. Came off the bench last year. I don't like when you throw it back in the press. Sharif all the way up and in. Ali Sharif averages six. He's got eight. Cuts it to a two-point game. That time, stolen by Belak. He's going to try to go length of the floor. Misses, follow-up, Rieger, yes. Cam Regard followed up, and we have a technical foul. Honestly, I can't believe this. Tied the game at 31. Deer Lakes commits their second turnover. And Mike, I can't believe it. I'm not even sure what it would be for. This is, we were told coming in to watch out. Uh, a lot of fouls get called here. Now Corey Dodgson's gonna have to sit on the bench. Remainder of the game. Schaefer makes the first technical and they're gonna get possession. We have possession too, Ken, that really hurts. Missed the second. I just trying to wrap my head around what the call may have been for. They just scored a you know, bucket. It's not like there was a bad call or anything made. I think he was just coaching, maybe too loud. Here's a steal by Belak. Pass the Regard again, up and in for Cam. Belak and Regard working well together. And Hines has a one point lead after all that. Three quick turnovers, how about four? Well, it, we're gonna get Cam Regard, Mike, and now he has three fouls. He has three. Definitely not letting him play tonight. Yep, Braden has three. And that is the 15 foul on Highlands. Spoiler alert, Deer Lake's only committed one, and we have 3.29 to go here in the second quarter. Wayne Love will go shoot a pair. First is good. He ties it at 33. And like I said, now we're going to have to play with one hand tied behind our backs with both Regard and Foster on the bench with three fouls each. This has not happened all year, Ken. Love makes them both. He now has six. And Deer Lake's on top by one. Caden Robertson, 6'1", senior, checks in for the Golden Rams for Regard. Now where do we turn for offense? That's going to be the question. And again, this 2-1-2 two -two extended defense has given Highlands trouble so far. Pass over the calendar. Back out to Sharif. Corner deep to Belak. That's where he is off the mark. And rebound for Moore. He's out quickly. That should be a charge. It is. Oh. Jordan Tavares, the king of taking charges, takes a charge there. Wayne Love going to get that one. That is their fourth turnover. And Highlands has a chance to take the lead. And number 32, Colby Such, comes in for the Lancers. So they've gone seven deep so far. Highland has gone eight with the foul trouble to Foster and Regard. And Highland now has a chance to take the lead. They really extend their defense. Yeah, I do think at this point, if you have a step, you got to try to take it to the hoop and draw a foul here. And Highland might want to just take some time off the clock. Yeah, at this point, too, you kind of. Bide your time until halftime when you get some big guns back. Yeah, I agree. Calendar from the corner. Misses. Tavares fights for the rebound, comes up with it. No foul. Go up. And they're going to get Hines over the top. Let's see who they're going to call this on. I believe it's staying down here. 
Well, they're going to get Deer Lake's full be such. There's a scrum down there. Only the third team foul, so Hines will inbound here. Robertson over to Tavares, cross court to Calendar, to Cherie. Cherie tries to penetrate, gets it back out to Belak. Two minutes to go here in the quarter. Highlands trailing by one. Now they're going to call walk. Eighth Highlands turnover. And Deer Lakes will get the ball with 1.51 to go here in the second quarter, leading 34-33. Rogers again coming up. Point guard going to set something up here. They love this 1-4 low set. It looks like they run most of their offense off it. Here comes Schaefer. And we're going to get a blocking call on who? It's going to be on Tavares. That time they go Jordan for his second foul. And again, Schaefer, the leading scorer, will go to the line to shoot a pair. But today it's been a Nathan Moore show, the 6'3 junior, 14 first half points. Schaefer misses the first. He's one for three today from the line. Makes the second. He now has seven. I was down by two. Tavares, the only one with experience besides Sharif out there, but Tavares, a senior, three year starter. Timeout. And unfortunately, Corey Dawson has to holler for that timeout because when you get a technical in high school, the coach has to sit on the bench for the remainder of the game. So Highlands will call a timeout here with 59 seconds to go here. And again, if we're looking ahead to Tuesday night, as I mentioned, we'll be off to Indiana. Indiana's an important game because we can't look ahead to Knock. Knock is probably going to be the game to determine second place, but we've got to have two things happen. One, we've got to take care of our own business, beat Indiana, but then we have to also hope Hampton goes into Knock and beats them there sets up that game on a Friday night. By the way, Deer Lake, on that run they had last year, they, they had a signature win, Ken. They beat Our Lady of Sacred Heart, and they beat them, and that broke a 74-game win streak, what happened to be the longest in the state. And then they turned around, same team, Our Lady of Sacred Heart. They beat them for the WPL Championship at Peterson Event Center, 61-60. They were a surprise team last year. They started 0-2. They came to Highlands for the tip-off tournament. They lost to Shaler by 12 the first night. We came back the second night. We beat them by 12, uh, 14 points at our place. So again, they started off 0-2. They ended up at 21-9, but they put on an eight-game win streak, which was important. All through the WPL to the championship, made it to the state game. Face a team called West Catholic, which I think was the west side of Philadelphia and parts above them. Unfortunately for Deer Lakes, they lost, but I wrote a letter to the editor of the Valley News Dispatch declaring them the public school champions of Pennsylvania, because I really feel that way. These private schools should be allowed to play, but in their own classification. Quick right. in the BLAC. Again, one minute to go here in the quarter. Hyden is down by two. See if they drew something up against his zone defense. Very aggressive. It's a zone, but would they really come out? Should be able to attack down in the box, but our big guy is sitting on the bench, 6'8", Braden Foster. He's back in there for this one, Mike. That's, they put both Foster and Regard back in for the final possession. Hopefully they don't make a mistake. In to Foster. Foster working. And up and in. That time, Nathan Moore could not stop the 6'8 Foster. He's got eight, but boy, they got to be very careful. Smart thing by Coach Dodson, 2-3 defense. They're going to play here for the final 30 seconds. And if I'm Deer Lakes, I'm going to try to attack those two guys. That's exactly Long what shot you should by do. McHugh. I don't think they wanted that shot, Ken, do you? No. I have to be patient now. Yeah. 
13 seconds to go. Regard over in the corner. Got five. Got to get the ball up here. At the buzzer. Off the side of the board. Thought we could have got a better shot there, but it's been an exciting first half. We're tied at 35. We'll be back with second half action after this. All right, let's take a look at the first half scoring for the Golden Rams. Ali Sharif has eight. Brayden Foster has eight. Jordan DeBarris has eight. Eights are wild. Cam Regard has six. Corey Belak has five for our 35. For the Deer Lakes Lancers, they're led by Nathan Moore with 14. Wayne Love has six. Billy Schaefer has seven. Aiden Fletcher has five. JT McHugh has three for their total of 35. Deer Lakes led at the quarter by four. High to, I scored 19-15 in the second quarter to tie the game at 35. Had a nice chat with Wayne Love Sr. Tells us Wayne is going to go on a football scholarship to Lock Haven. So uh, Wayne, again, outstanding wide receiver for Deer Lakes. Had a good year in football, too. So things are turning around for the Lancers. Last year, Ken, they called the year of the deer. Happily named, I guess. And they've had great community support uh, on their run last year and uh, here too. So again, the Golden Rams will play defense to start the second half as Schaefer inbounds for Deer Lake. Rogers back to Schaefer, just playing a catch out front. Hodge is sticking at two threes. I think Mike, again, I keep saying Mike, Mike, you're here <laughs> to protect on defense. So they're going to call that foul on. That is outrageous. Wow. Uh, now Jordan Tavares has three fouls. Braden Foster has three fouls. Cam Regard has three fouls. And we're playing a zone. Up and in for Moore. Challenge Tommy Calder. He now has 16, and they take a two-point lead. Boy, you're going to really be careful on defense now with the big three all having three fouls. Hines had a little hot streak for Tavares at a couple threes. Thought they might be able to get him out of the zone, but Deer Lakes would be content to stay in that zone with the two-point lead. Regard, great three-point shooter, misses everything. Calder comes down with the rebound out to Sharif. He double clutches. Over to Foster. Foster tried to get it over to Calder. Schaefer tipped it out of bounds. Hines gets possession. Trailing by two at the seven minute mark here in the third quarter, 37 35. All three seniors have three fouls apiece. Now it's a 1 3 1. I would like to post Foster down low right here. There you go. He's got to get entry to him quicker though. We got a 6'8 guy down there. We got to use him. That time he just got pushed out of bounds by. There we go. Down to Foster. And now he finally gets fouled. That foul's going to go on number 22, Nathan Moore, his second. Ken, do you think we just got on there and challenged him with him? I mean, you got to try to do something. Um, like I said earlier in the first half, you get a step. I just keep going to the basket, try to draw a foul, maybe get a push off or something. Foster, a 66% foul shooter, misses the first. Hines shooting 67% on the year. Miss both. You can't do that in these tight games. You got to make them pay from the foul line or they'll just continue to fight. Now both teams are sitting in a 2-3 zone. This game may not get to the 50s, Ken. Inside to go, trying to get Foster to get his fourth foul. He can't. Regard gets the rebound. Foster just kept jumping straight up in the air, hoping not to get a call. His calls have been in plenty here in the first half. The Bears going to take a long three. In and out, four. Deer Lakes Lancers around the ball. They're going to go right down. Oh, that's yeah. what they're going to call. They're going to call. Tavares for its fourth foul. Unbelievable. 
That's a no call at best, Ken. Uh, yeah, he was leaning a little bit. I'd like to see a no call there, especially that close underneath the basket. That's both their territories. They're allowed to play for position there. If anything, a no call, that was pretty soft. Pretty soft. And they didn't call a shooting foul, which is surprising, because I thought he was in the act of anything, too. Schaefer long three. This is everything but the rebound. Dragged down by Love. Schaefer goes to the basket. He's going to call a foul. And who are they going to call a foul on? That's going to be the big question. They're going to get Tommy countered. Tommy has two now. And Schaefer's going to go to the foul line. Thomas Good to see you the line. Whistle before. You call a violation in the lane. No basket. Hyden's gets the inbound of the ball now. Trailing by four. Yeah, right there, you got to get it down, see if you can do something on the post. They keep double team and Foster and lots of hands on too. You notice that, Ken? Sharif will teardrop. He's got 10. Highlands down by two. Quickly, here comes Schaefer. Sharif cut, cut him off. He'll take the three, though. Over the top, no call. Right down Broadway is Wayne Love. Didn't want to contend the shot because, again, foul trouble. They now lead again by four. Yeah, with the over and backs or over the back calls, they've been calling them soft all night. You got to have stay consistent. If anything, that should have been called. Foster wide open in the middle. They missed him. Cross court to Calendar. Tavares with a three. He's been a dead eye. First one of the night for Cam. He'll shoot them out of that zone, giving the opportunity. Quickly down, though. Belak going to get a foul. And Wayne Love's going to go to the line. Love just beat everybody down the floor. Belak picks up his second. Fifteen fouls on Highlands. Six on Deer Lake. Love misses the first. A dear friend of the Highlands program who will go unnamed called me after the Burrow game and asked me to watch the game and see what I thought. And it was really bad as far as fouls go. Dear friend, I've mentioned you on the broadcast, but I will not reveal your name. Are they going to give him two shots? I have no idea. They blew the whistle. He missed it. We'll see. <laughs> The referees aren't doing a very good job of signaling either. Love misses both. Ball's tipped out of bounds. Highlands gets it. So I guess there was another weight, uh, lane violation on Deer Lake. All right, only down a point. Seems like more, doesn't it, Ken? Yeah, it does. But a chance to take the lead. Foster begging for it in the middle. He gets it. Four guys surrounded him. Kicked it out to Calder. Calder brings it back out to Sharif. They are really collapsing on him. Yeah, I'd like to see him not put it on the ground. Just take a big wide turn and go up with it. See if he can draw some fouls. I think he's afraid of getting that charging foul. That was a terrible pass. Hell ball. Possession arrow goes to. High. So it wasn't a turnover, but can't have that pass at his feet. Six foot eight guy, you gotta put it up high. They're gonna double Foss because they their favorite plays just to lob it in. And they contended that one. Should not have tried that. They had a double team there. Block from behind, but on the glass again. Nathan Moore, he's been a beast. He's got 18. And Deer Lake's up by three. Again, high is trying to climb this mountain to try to get the lead. They had an early 11 to 6 lead. Been all Deer Lakes ever since. Again, look at Foster down there, Ken. Just lob it in. All right. Right there. There it is. Now he has access. Now here comes a double. 
Little baby hook. Oh, he's lucky he didn't get that fourth yep. one there. Okay. The way they've been calling it. Dribble comes up on Love, gets it out to the point guard, over to Schaefer. Down it goes to Fletcher, into Love. Love takes it right in, and they're going to call a foul on who? Foster. <laughs> Unbelievable. The Braden Foster. Oh, he, he's going to get another technical. He's going to get another technical. He's not allowed off the bench. Coach Corey Dodson is really having a heated argument with the referee. Let's see if they're, they're going to discuss it. Who's making the call? And they're going to discuss it. And it's going to stick. I thought it was Belak if anybody can. Yeah. So Braden Foster has four fouls. Jordan Tavares has four fouls. And Wayne Love, the recipient, makes his first. He's got nine. Three of five from the foul line. And they're really Foster out there, Mike. I can I think it's a dangerous thing to do. What would you do? Well, at this point, the way they're calling it, I think it's bound to happen one way or the other. You're kind of staying afloat right now. Might as well just keep seeing if it works. All right, let's see what they do. Belak, long three, off the glass. Go. Calendar with the rebound, out the regard, and one. And we got a call on Wayne Love. Off the ball, Wayne Love tackled Tommy Calendar. He's going to play football in college, Mikey. Can he look like he was uh, playing football there? Did you see it? I think it was the other way around. I think uh, we might be on the benefiting end of one for Well, good here. news. You're on YouTube, you can back it up and take a look. Right, and now down, only one point. And he'll get the inbound of the ball. 12 now for Regard after he hits that three. They're going to give him two shots. I don't think they can give him two shots there. I, yeah, I don't understand that. There's only two team fouls at the yeah. moment. They're, they're correcting it. He thought it was five fouls. We have five fouls. They'll shoot the rest of the quarter, not us. Out to Sharif. Into Belak. Slipped. How you do? Don't put And on the Highlands takes the lead. 45-44. Troy Belak has seven. And coming right back is Colin Rogers hitting his first three of the game. And Deer Lakes jumps right on top. Again, we just can't seem to keep this lead. Every time we get it, Deer Lakes is answered. Two twelve to go in the third quarter. High is down two, blocked. Foster battles for it. Box out that time by Colby Such. Deer Lakes gets the ball ahead by one. Two minutes to go here. Right down, goes there blocked go. from behind. Schaefer by Belak. Ollie Sharif, one man to beat. He scores. Sharif has a dozen. Highlands calls timeout. And we're tied at 47. How are they doing this, guy? Smoke and mirrors, huh? <laughs> They're yeah. hanging in there. Like I said, in transition, they've been doing fine all game. It's when they kind of get set up uh, in that half-court game. They're having trouble with the zone, but they're also playing pretty decent defense on their own, even with the foul trouble. It's going to come down to uh, probably last couple possessions here. Well, Deer Lakes, their credit, only have committed four turnovers, Five, all in the first six, half, have not committed three, a turnover yet. Hyden has committed five, nine turnovers. Seven, and looking five, six, at the trip live, they have a top ten regardless of classification. And Deer Lakes, a 3A team, is ranked fifth of all top ten teams, no matter what classification. Lincoln Park is first, a 4A team. Then it's really strange, a 2A, a 1A team is second, Imani Christian. They beat St. Joe's the other day, can 98 to 24. Ouch. These are two private schools, and they'll play each other the last game of the year. That will be interesting. But right now, let's get back to this one. Tied at a 47, 150 to go in the third quarter. Deer Lakes with the ball. Minaj Lucas checks in a lot of, he's getting his first varsity action in an important part of the game. They're gonna put Foster on the bench since he has those Four fouls, smart idea by Coach Dodson. 
Hodge is going to sit in this 2-3 zone. Stolen by Belak. He's had a great game on defense. I think Hines would want to take some time off the clock with two guys with four fouls, two starters. I think it's a good idea. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, I can't blame him at all here. Deer Lake's not coming out of it. But they're extending it. You notice the little pressure they're giving them? Belak deep in the corner. He's going to play catch with it 50 seconds to go. Nosh Lucas playing the post position now. Just got to be mindful to pop in and out every couple seconds here. And Regard dribbles on. 39 seconds to go. And now they've really extended that defense. They're going to get a five count. Now they back it off. 30 seconds. I was content. Continue to work the ball around. Five count begins. Once they come out, make contact. Ooh, too tall. Ali Sharif commits the 10th Highlands turnover. And with 16 seconds, Deer Lakes will get the ball with a chance to take the lead. It's a good look. Just missed them by a few feet there. They worked it down to where they wanted to get a shot. Menage Lucas, no, no call, no call, no call. I think there was a no call. He he went to blow the whistle, then he dropped it. Good. Now you that's probably yeah. one time I think a no call was good. Do you? Right. I mean, in that case, if anything, it may have been a block, but like I said, benefit from the no call there. That's for sure. And what a game here! Like 47-47. That quarter was 12-12 after a halftime tie, 35. End of the third quarter, trivia time, Ken. Last night, a WPL coach got their 500th career win. Any idea who that coach could be? 500th career win. Dave. De I can't read your chicken scratch. I'm sorry. We were going to cheat, but I can't read <laughs> I his handwriting. Him, since he's coming in sub in last minute for Mike Pavlik, I would give him the trivia answer, but he can't read my chicken scratch. It's a guy who coached against you, Dave DiGregorio. Uh, yeah. His dad was a pit assistant for years. Dave, Ken, has been at it for how many years? How many years think Dave DiGregorio has been coaching? 30. You got that right. 30 years. Started at Pine Ridge, and that's when you guys were playing him back in 2009. Went on to North Catholic. You know why he was a North Catholic? No idea. His son was there. So Makes sense. Coach, his son. Now I was at North Allegheny. They had a big win yesterday against Butler, 70-63, for that 500th win. And it was a great win for them because in the first half, Butler made 11 three-pointers. Can you imagine that? And they lose by seven. Well, Deer Lakes will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. And it's going to be as tight as it's been in the whole game. We might be seeing overtime here. Nosh Lucas stays out there. Tavares also staying on the bench. I think Coach is going to try to go as long as he can with these guys. Long three by Rogers. Big basket by number 22, Nathan Moore. He's been a difference. He's got 20. Deep in the corner to Calendar. Out to Regard. And again, I think Tigers will take some time. What do you think, Ken? Regard for right a long on. three. Off the back rim, Tommy Calder. Time down with the rebound. They could have called a push there. They've been very inconsistent exactly. with the ball. Exactly. That's the most infuriating part, and I think that played a factor into uh, Coach getting the tee, and I would have had a couple myself by now, too. <laughs> Regard looks to attack. Menage Lucas fights for the rebound, and there were Love. He comes out of there with it. Nice pass to Schaefer. Pump fake. Missed it. There's that man again. Moore's got 22. Deer Lake's up four. Might be time to put him in. Here comes Tavares and Foster. I take a timeout to get him in this trip, Ken. You have him. What do you think? Yeah, I think that'd be a good call.
Belak, three off the back iron. He's gonna come up with it. It's Rogers, again, ahead the long steps of Wayne Love. And again, no time out. You gotta get these guys in. They're sitting there waiting to check in. Long pass, cross court. Really, we only have one offensive threat on the floor right now. It's Cam Regard, he's at the top of the key. Yeah, you gotta try to get some penetration and look for kicks yeah. off of that. They haven't tried it too much. I know they're trapping up high, it makes it difficult, but the 13, second touch needs to drive. 1,300 point score waiting to get in the game, and we can't get him in. There you go. Reef off the glass, here to drop. He's got 14, that's a career high. And Hines is down four. But again, we can't get our guys into the game. Love to the glass, intended. And they're gonna call that one. I think it's gonna be on Belak. Finally, we'll get to get our players into the game, our subs. Yep. Troy picks up his third. But more important, we'll get Foster and Tavares in for the final 5-16. Hopefully they'll be able to play the final 5-16. Yeah, the way they're calling this, I doubt it. Now there's a prediction. Love is short with his first. Wayne three for seven from the foul line. Lucas and Counter come out. Well, the good news, Tavares and Foster should be fresh for the final 5-16 here. Trailing 53-49. Way and early that time was more no call up. Surprised. There's Regard. There's three. And all of a sudden, it's a one point game again, Ken. Holly Shree. Excuse me, that was Regard that time. He's got 15. And Hyden trails by one. Now, Deer Lakes would be content to save some time. It's been a cat and mice, mouse game here. Walk by Foster. Gotta be careful. Schaefer misses. Hyde has another chance to take the lead. Be like ahead of the pack. Over to Regard. Catch, shoot, score! Cam Regard with another three. And there's a timeout taken by Deer Lakes. Cam Regard's come alive. He's got 18. More importantly, the Golden Rams are ahead by two. What's the strategy now, Ken, do you think? I'm gonna leave that one up to you. <laughs> well, I would say they're being content to take time off the clock. We gotta nurse these guys with four fouls. Right. That thing is, stay in the zone. They can beat you over the top. And if we do get the ball with the lead, take some time off the clock. I have no problem with it. Going back and looking at that top 10 that uh, Trib Live put together, mentioned one Lincoln Park, two Imani Christian. Then we have two 6-8 teams, Upper St. Clair and Mount Lebanon. What's funny about this is Mount Lebanon just beat Upper St. Clair by 17. Mount Lebanon is ranked fourth, Upper St. Clair is ranked third. That should change. Mentioned Deer Lakes is fifth. Talked about Butler earlier. They lost to North Allegheny. They're rate six. They're a 15 and four team. Aliquippa, a little 2-8 team, is seventh. They're 15 and four. One of our rivals for years, Franklin Region, was eighth at 17 and two. Shaler, a team that was really a good team this year. They beat us early in the year. They're 18 and two. They beat Penn Hill 52-38. And then Moon comes in at the number 10 spot. They're 16 and three. They beat Char Valley 60 to 36. So again, those are your top 10 teams according to the Trib Live. So Highlands with a two point lead on with the Trip Live considers the fifth best team in the WPL on their home court. This is that signature win I was talking about in the pregame. We have to get one of these, and this is our chance right now with the lead down. Deer Lakes down two. Gonna go against our two three zone. Halfway through the fourth quarter. I was gonna make him shoot over top of it. Shreve out there. 
Wayne Love in a wing. I would like to see him in a high post on Deer Lake. They're looking for instruction over on the bench. They're doubling down on the post yet. Ken High Low. They want to get Foster's fifth. That time though, Orr has 24. He's been impressive here tonight, Ken. Yeah, definitely been good on the boards too. Tied at 55. Cam Regard's been hot here in the fourth quarter. He's wide open in the corner. And they come back to him. If, if they shade towards, yep, there you go, right there. They shade towards Foster and double, Regard's gonna get that shot. Right. And that's where it is right there, right now. There we go into the post. Off the glass, Foster with his 10th point. And the Golden Rams jump up in front again by two. On the floor, they're gonna call a foul. And you got Ali Sharif. Hotness has committed now their 16th foul of the evening. Only the second here of the fourth quarter. Remember, on five, they shoot two from here on this. No, no longer one-on-one. Too easy. Blocked by Great Foster, defense. though. And Hines with a chance to go up by four. And they're going to spread it out again. And they're going to make them chase. I think they've kind of figured out where the Deer Lakes is playing spots, and they're just passing around it. Right. 2.30 to go here. Hines with a two-point lead. It's been a great game. And when we go to shoot, Regard is wide open. It's one of his favorite spots in the corner. I would not be afraid to let him rip one. At this point, maybe try to lull the sleep too a little bit. There it is. Easy. Tavares likes to use that off arm. Now they're coming out man to man. I call timeout. Go right into Foster. Right there, he had him. He's got to go to him right there, Ken. Walked, and they're going to call a foul. What do you think, Ken? When they go man to man, do you go to Foster? Oh, yeah, definitely. Immediately into the post. But like I said, it was a good drive, good take. Not sure it was a foul, but once again, the inconsistency all night. Not surprised to get a whistle there, but I do like the commitment to the drive. Tavares will shoot two. Hines up by two. 152 to go. Deuces are wild. Jordan 63% from the line. Makes the first. Hines still up one possession. This is a big one, Kent, because it puts him up by two possessions. Second one's good. Tavares now has 10, and more importantly, Highlands is up four, and they're going to sit in that 2-3. Now, oh, they're going to get to, yep, they're going to get Belak. He had him around the waist. That's Troy's fourth foul. Tavares has four fouls. Foster has four fouls. Regard has three fouls. Calder has three fouls. Good news, only the third team foul. Long three, missed. Rebound up and in by guess who? Mr. Moore. And that makes it a two point game. Moore now with 26 points. What's the strategy now, Ken? Well, like I said, I think d is going to be a little bit more aggressive here if Highlands does try to hold the ball. But like you said, if they do get Regar, who's been hitting from the corner there all night, I let them rip. I think they're going to come out man to man. Then I, like I said, try to try to burn some clock. But like you said earlier, get it down to Foster if they do that. See if he can get to the line. Well, Deer Lakes has one big problem. If you look at the scoreboard, Ken, they've only got one team foul. Highlands has the lead. They're gonna, they'll be able to turn up the pressure on defense. They're gonna have to play man to man because they're gonna bump us up because of anything to put us on the foul line. They've got to foul four more times. Right. And our inbounds but, haven't been uh, extremely crisp tonight either. So might be what he's going for over there. And you take a look at foul shots. Highlands has only taken six foul shots. Cam is two for two. 
Jordan is two for two, and Braden is 0 for two, so. Again, they're gonna look like they're gonna pressure full court. Again, we're looking for the signature win. This one would be it for the Golden Ram. Especially with uh, some of the hurdles they've had to, uh, to get over tonight, especially with the foul trouble. Foster got four fouls early. Tavares, four fouls early. Corey Dotchin, Coach Dot, got a technical foul. And Hyden still has a two-point lead. Let's see if they bump him up. Over to Tavares. They're not bumping. They're going to be aggressive. You know, it got hands on and called a foul there. Can't believe they're not fouling, Cat. To really come back to haunt them. Let's get away from that half court circle. Oh. Run away. Stolen by McHugh. Passed on to Love. He ties the score. I give him credit, Ken. They did not foul. I thought for sure they would foul. Well, Highlands all this year, Ken, have been in last shot situations. And unfortunately, in three of the four situations, they never got a shot off. I'll take you back to the knock game. We had a chance in regulation to score with 10 seconds. Didn't get the shot off. Hampton, same situation. Hampton had a foul to give in that game. They shoved Foster in the back out of bounds. Still didn't get the call, but we didn't get the shot off. And again, the other night, we had a chance to get the last shot off and didn't do it. So hopefully, again, this time we're going to get a chance to get a shot off, get a good shot off, have the ball, get out of here with a win. Tied at 59. I did predict overtime, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Let's see if we get bonus basketball out here. Hold on to something at home. These last 37 seconds will be very interesting. And again, both teams are not going to be in shooting situations. Belak in the inbound, gets it to Tavares. you got to get the hand off him, Ken. Wayne Love is all over him. Well, I think like you mentioned earlier, with four fouls to give, I think they're coaching Wayne. Keep the hand on. If you get the call, you get the call. All right, 22 seconds. The con is on. Con is like to take it down to 10, take a timeout. They overplayed, Mike. Here we go. Now, again, yep. that's what they do. 10, 13 seconds ago, they'll get another timeout. They're playing man to man, correct? Yeah, you had them off balance there. I'm not sure if I. Uh, Call a timeout? Yeah. Well, I think they had them in a position where this is basically Highlands' MO to take this timeout. Foster's got to touch the ball in this play. Do you agree? Don't disagree at all. And again, to Highlands credit, Foster, Tavares, Belak have played with four fouls. Foster and Tavares, the entire second half. I just don't know how in the world Ali Sharif has survived this long and only has two fouls on the night the way they've been calling this game. Yeah, and he's been aggressive all night. So again, Highlands with a chance to get the win here. Final 13 seconds to go. Deer Lakes has been in some tight games before. I mentioned that championship game they won last year. They won at the buzzer there at Peterson Event Center, defeating Our Lady of Sacred Heart, who had won 74 games in a row prior to that in that season. They took them out twice, once in the regular season and once in the championship. So again, keep talking about that signature win for Highlands. Here's a chance, 13.6 to go. Tied at 59 with the basketball. Let's see what the Golden Rams can do here. Belak, Sharif, Regard, Foster, Tavares on the floor for the Golden Ram. Step one, get the ball inbound. All right, now let's look for a score. I wouldn't mind taking a score here right now. The double team of the ball. 
Hot pop, four seconds to go. You gotta shoot it at the buzzer. They're going overtime. They're going over the foul, but four minute overtime. Tied at 59. Tavares was looking for a shove there, didn't get it. And Coach Dodson again giving the referees an earful here. Can't get, get any closer than this. 35 35 at the end of the half, 47 47 at the end of the three quarters. And now it's 59-59 as we get to overtime. Crazy. So it'll be four minutes for overtime. One thing important, the fouls stay where they are. I'm playing where it's high. I was committed three, and Deer Lakes has committed only one. So we're going to overtime. Those fouls carry over. What a game. Then back and forth, a nail biter, and again, but Ken, four times, Hodgins does not get a shot off at right. the end. Well, that time they did get the shot off, just don't think it was the one they wanted, so. But again, Foster doesn't touch the ball either. All right, Hodgins drawing something up here as we go to the four minute overtime. There'll be a jump ball, by the way. Let's hope we don't get a foul call off of it. Yeah. Well, if you remember, it's crazy. This game started with a technical on Deer Lakes. We think it was for dunking the ball before the game, and Highlands made those two points. Those two points sent us into overtime. And I think it's important Highlands gets this tap. Hot as does, Tavares controls it. And let's see what Deer Lakes comes out with defensively this time. Well, they're still gonna sit in the zone. Yeah. More aggressive though. Foster off the glass, misses. And here comes Deer Lakes. Fletcher with the ball, kicks it over to Rogers. Rogers into Wayne, Love. He's got 15. Deer Lakes ahead by two. Tavares steps into the lane. Over to Regard. His three up. His three down. Cam Regard now with 21. More poorly. Hodden's up one. 62 to 61. They're going to sit back in that 2 3 again, Ken. Yeah, I think Deer Lakes is going to try to be as aggressive as they can with Highlands. They're still in all that foul trouble. The war of attrition might catch up here in overtime. They go into Love. He throws it to Moore off his hands. That's the eighth turnover. And we got a timeout here. And here's Schaefer, excuse me, Moore, chance to tie his shoes. Highlands the inbound with a one point lead. One three one back into one three one. Now they're coming out and playing regard. Wised up. Oh, we got to go down to Foster. Right down now to Foster. Bingo, bango, bongo. Foster with a dozen. Hyden's lead up to three. Here it comes. Oh, they're going to oh. call the fifth foul. Love came down the lane. They're going to call the fifth foul on Braden Foster, and that's going to be it for him. I thought it was all ball, Ken. What was your thought? Yeah, I mean, you got two really athletic guys going to the rack like that. <laughs> you know how I used to play. I used to get a lot of technicals myself, so I'm not the guy to ask. <laughs> well, Foster has to go sit down. And he has to be careful, too, not to get that fifth foul. I mean, get a technical foul to get in the fifth foul. <laughs> Calendar checks in. We have a timeout for Deer Lakes. They're going to talk over strategy. Hodgins with a three-point lead, but Braden Foster's on the bench for the rest of the game. Coach Scotch is going over, giving some instruction to Troy Belak. He becomes a very important guy in this game because, again, he's been great sophomore. all night too. Yes, 
Let's uh, recap the score really quick for you here. Hot in 64-61. Ali Sharif has 14. Cam Regard 21. Braden Foster doesn't just foul out. Jordan Zavaris has 10. Troy Bielek has 7. For Deer Lake, Paul and Roger 3. Aiden Fletcher 5. Billy Schaefer 9. Wayne Love 15. Nathan Moore has been the big guy with 26. JT McCune has three. By the way, Ken, with all this live music, YouTube is going to tag us for copyright infringement. Well, the good news is you don't get paid for it anyway. <laughs> I think Coach is talking with the BLAC there, just letting him know that he's the one who has to take that foul there. And he is right. He only has a three. But as a young kid, you'll, you'll learn that eventually. So Love goes to the line. He is two of seven from the foul line today has 15 points, one for five at six in this quarter, make it two for seven this half. He now has 16. And it's a two point game. Makes them both, cuts it to one. Love now with 17, and here comes the pressure. Sharif gets it over to Tavares. He's trapped at the timeline, not over and back. His body was in the front court. Belak looked. Again, Cam Regard. There's a foul. Only the second. Aiden Fletcher commits that. That's his third foul. And really, Ken, that's not a bad foul over there for the simple reason they have fouls to give. They right, exactly. had him trapped in the had the sideline. By the way, it's right in front of our girls team right there. The girls come out and support the guys all the time. Oh, no, there's another foul. Yep. Watch out. Fletcher gets his fourth. He's one of their team leaders. I mean, and Mike. Again with the inconsistency. That's not a, that's not a foul. Dodge is going to call timeout. Can they're being aggressive, and they should, because they've got to get into a situation where they have to foul. Right. They're going to be able to put somebody on the line for the Golden Rams. Golden Rams shoot 67% from the foul line. Let's take a look at the percentages of the guys on the floor. Ali Sharif, 80% free throw shooter. Tommy Callender, 90% free throw shooter. Cam Rieger shoots 73%. Jordan Tavares, 63%. Troy Belak, 71%. Can you remember back when you guys played what your percentage was from the foul line? Uh, no idea. I looked it up before we came today, knowing you were coming today. You guys shot 71% from the foul line. That's above average for high school basketball. And that 2009 year, you guys made it all the way to the championship. Uh, lost to Hampton, who also won the section that year. At wasn't a Peterson Event Center. It was a Plumbo Center, which is now called Chuck Davies Court at Duquesne University. And you guys made a little run in the state championship that year, too. You beat uh, Somerset. That's always been a great trivia question. Who has the most three-pointers in a game for Highland? Do you know the answer to that? He was on your team. I think obviously would be Micah, but that seems like a trick question. Everybody says obviously. They're all over and they won't call it. Well, we got away with moving out of bounds, so. 155 to go. He's pushing them out that timeline. Now let's see what they're gonna call. Oh, hey! After the fact, Tavares knocked on. Yeah, I don't think that was intentional. Moore really laid him into the wall. What are they gonna call here? By the way, the answer is Seth Edwards. Oh, okay. Remember he had 10 against Somerset? Yeah. And the crazy thing was, he didn't start the next game. You don't have to ask Falter about that one. <laughs> well, we can, unfortunately. But the reason why was, Trensky had been thrown out of the Hampton game. He had to sit the first state game against Somerset. And when he did, Seth got the start and made 10-3. Well, let's see here. That's going to be four fouls apiece now. They gave that foul to Fletcher. He's out of the game. So two guys have walked the flank. Hines with the one-point lead and the ball. Give it to Sharif. He didn't even look at the basket. That's a great move. Next foul. Somebody's going to the foul line, Ken. Either team. Got to watch this five-second call. Got to get rid of it. There he goes. He breaks that line. They're going to foul. Sharif! 
with a teardrop. Ali's got 16. Career high, and more importantly, three-point lead, 1.15 to go. Time out, Deer Lake. Oh! Colin Rogers with the three-pointer in. <laughs> After the fact. And hats off to Belek again. As for a young sophomore out there, he's not cracking when they're they're trapping him up top. He hasn't cracked one time. He's found the open man. Uh, some big minutes in a in a big game with uh, a lot of guys going down with foul trouble. Yeah, he's only a sophomore. He's a coach's kid. His dad Steve is the seventh grade coach, eighth grade coach for the middle school. And uh, again, they put him in a lot of pressure spots, and he's responded. So again, this is going to be a big big possession coming up for Deer Lakes and. Uh, it's been a great game, there's no doubt about it. You can see why they're ranked number one in 3A and uh, why Hyde is doing so well this year. So again, the coaching wheels are turning. You get a shot in our huddle there. You can see Coach Dodgson drawing something up down there and uh, Coach Fletcher doing the same thing over there for Deer Lake. And again, any fouls will put somebody in the foul line here in the final stages of overtime. So Deer Lakes will inbound here. Trailing by three with 1.14 to go in overtime. I'm going to sit in that two, three. They need a three. Schaefer, again, the only returning starter from that team that made it to the state championship last year. I think we have to shade him. They're going to go take the two, and we'll give them that two. And again, pressure situation here. Sharif has to get it in. They get it in to Tavares. He's got Wayne Love on him. They double and get it over to Sharif. Got to go. Got to go. Seconds. He got over. And again, Hines is going to hold it here. Try to get final 34 seconds. He gets bumped. Are they going to call the foul on? It's going to go on Love. That would be Wayne third. We'll shoot two shots. Wayne picks up his fourth. Tavares goes to the line. Again, it was a smart foul because even if he makes the both, still a one possession game. Right. Eleven points now for Jordan, and Hines ahead by two. This is the important one here. Thirty-one seconds to go. And a classic makes them both. Time on Highland. Now, do you come out and play a little man-to-man, -man, Ken? Now at this point, the zones are working well enough that. They've got enough pressure on their perimeter. They're forcing them to kind of play for two and, or drive at that point. So I, I don't know. I think I might sit in it. Well, let's take, talk about fouling. If you foul them, they're only going to shoot two foul shots. You have a three-point lead. What do you think about that? See, I've seen that work, and I've seen that come back to bite you. I'm also not a huge basketball guy, so I'm Well, I would sorry say I'm putting all the listeners <laughs> through this, but I'm going to leave that one to you again. Well, as a former coach, I was always for fouling, okay? Coach Falter, ex-Highlands coach, never was into that. We finally talked him into doing it, and it paid off for him a couple of times. But the thing you don't want to do is foul immediately, though, because there's too much right, game left. Right. I'd say if you get him down to the final 10 seconds, and they have a ball in their hand, not attempting a shot, go ahead and foul him. I yeah. would also let him have that layup again. I would, you know, oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah, contest exactly. that. That's why I, I wouldn't run away from the zone either. You can still foul out of a zone. Trust me, I've done it plenty of times. <laughs> All right. Deer Lake in bind of the ball. 31 seconds to go, trailing 68-65. We're in overtime if you're just joining us. And they're checking how many timeouts. Hines has one left. Both teams have one timeout left. 31 seconds to go. I don't think they're playing man to man now, okay? Deer Lakes lets the ball roll up, doesn't start until somebody picks it up. Go ahead, Troy, go get it. <laughs> All right, man to man. Here we go. 
Schaefer looking to try to get that three off. Rogers has hit one. He's out there with the ball right now. 20 seconds ago. They look a little confused out there. And they know they got to put it up now. There it is. Corner. Stolen by Tavares. Stolen by Tavares. He's fouled. They were confused, Ken. There was no doubt about right. it. They thought Hodge was going to sit in that zone. Well, it looks like they played an off-pressure man to make it almost look like a 2-3. Yep. Yep. So. And two, they're going to call that foul on. 22 is Nathan Moore. His fourth. And Tavares now can put this away, Ken. He can make one of the two here. And he'll shoot two. All shots are two shots. Boom. Jordan Tavares, five for five, coming down the stretch. And everybody gets off the line. And you don't want to foul here. That's the one thing you don't want to do. Make this one. And it is a two possession game. Come on, Jordan. Yes, he does. He's got 14. No fouls. No fouls. He contended. He doesn't go out there. At the buzzer, the highest goal to Rams prevail, 70 to 65. We've been looking for that signature win. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed it here tonight. A gutsy, gutsy game by the Golden Rams. Knock off the number one team in 3A. Braden Foster on the bench for the overtime. Your thoughts, Kent? Well, it was a great game overall. I'm going to let you close it out here. Um, once again, uh, can't uh, replace Milo, so I'm sorry you guys had to listen to me, but I try to do my best. Appreciate you coming and helping us out. <laughs> Big week this week for the Golden Rams. Tuesday, out at Indiana. Friday, home against Knock. Be there for that one. Next Monday, we go out. We play an exhibition against Kiffy. Great game here tonight. Tough place to win. Golden Rams pulled off. Thanks to Kian Foster here on camera. And a great Highlands victory. Go Golden Rams. <laughs>